Hey, yeah. So, I know I'm pretty much posting a lot of videos about the eggs and how excited I am that they're actually laying. It's winter, it's really been really cold, but what I found out is that when you get new eggs, they, I mean new chickens, they actually start laying through the winter because, you know, they're teenagers or they're young hens, so for that reason, they will lay through the winter so if you want to continue to have eggs through the winter you have to get a new batch of hens that way you can um have eggs through the winter but i was getting a little worried as you guys know but these chickens are laying so well by help me count them how many do we have so we have let's see because i'm pretty sure there's four five six white seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I think 13 or 14. 12? We should have more. 12 and 13 with the thing. We should have one more. Did I count? We should have 14 in total. Maybe so one, two, five. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh yeah, no, there's 14 there. Yeah. So my goal was obviously to get one per day from each one of them. And as I came here this morning, to my surprise, look at how many eggs are in here. I am super impressed guys, so excited because this is like a really good collection of eggs. Let me count them. Before, I'm pretty sure you guys could have counted them while we were looking. Take a guess, put it in the comments like we did earlier and we'll see how many. So two, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and there's one more over here. Eleven. And I'm pretty sure that one of the white hens is going to come every time I feed them. She comes and lays her eggs after. It seems like the other ones lay them as soon as they wake up. But there's one white hen that always comes after I feed them. She goes back in there. So that was how many did we say? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11, and we have 13 girls with one rooster. So 13. And one of them likes to lay it in. Oh, yeah, one of them lays over there. I already got that egg and put it there because I had to get them food. And so there's two of them who aren't laying so far, which is pretty impressive to have these many eggs for one day for a family of five. That's perfect. As they accumulate, you can make big meals, you can give them away. If you have a big enough farm, you can sell them. But I'm super excited, guys. I had to come and share this with you guys. This is the biggest, the biggest collection I've had ever since I got all these hens. I do have Coco on the other coop and she has one egg I already checked that just didn't have anything to carry it with. And that would be 12 eggs in one day. Coco is an amazing layer. She lays every single day and her eggs are much bigger than these. They're like pretty big. I'm pretty sure these girls will eventually start laying bigger eggs because Coco did start with little eggs. So we'll see. I just had to share this moment with you guys. I hope that if you guys are considering to get chickens, I highly recommend them. They're super easy to take care of. All they need is an enclosed area with protection from any predators and rain and a little place to run and do their thing and you will have eggs as you see because they're organic organic eggs in the store are super expensive you know what you're feeding in the, what you're feeding them if you have a garden you can always feed them scraps to substitute some of their diet and you know what you're feeding your family which is the biggest thing and not to mention with everything else that's going on right now in the world a little bit of security you know can make a difference there she goes there goes that white hen that always eats and she's gonna go roost and lay another egg. So we're about to be having what, 13 we said? Uh, 11. 11. Right there, and then 12. 12. Yes. So 12. So she's like, wait. Coco's is 12, Coco. 13. 13. Yes. She came back for more food. She's like, wait a minute, I'm not ready. I need to get a little bit more. Anyway, so this is a really good way to have. Um, so you know some security if you, with everything that's going on with the shortage of food and prices going up like you can get some hens grow your own food that way you can feed them chesty sorry my dog escaped let me go get him <laughs> all right so we found chesty come here chesty you crazy kid you guys know he's an he's an escape artist and we do let him walk around with us as long as we were watching him but i got distracted talking to you guys 
so we want to make sure he didn't take off because he will leave. He's he's already escaped twice and we were he was gone almost an entire night one night and we were so scared that he got eaten alive by a bobcat because we get bobcats around here. We get tons of coyotes you can hear them at night. And uh, I don't think a hawk can eat him. He's there I think he's pretty big enough to not get eaten by a hawk. But he's a little chesty, a little Boston Terrier. If you guys are in the military, if you guys recognize his name, he was by name after uh, Chesty Polar. I'm not sure if you guys know who he is. I highly recommend you guys um, uh, look into it. If not, I'll get my husband to tell you guys a little history about him, who he was. But this is our little Chesty. He's a little cutie. He's about nine years old. He's been this family since before Lily. So, um, yeah. He's an awesome guy. Anyways, guys, back to the eggs. Food security. Food prices are going up. You can grow your own food to feed them. Um, substitute with some grains. Grow your own sunflowers and feed them that and they will love it. In fact, I'm going to throw a sunflower head that I had over there. I gave one to Coco and she's been munching on it and I'm going to throw one in here for them to, you know, play with it, eat it and enjoy it. And I hope that this encouraged you guys to actually start growing some food because not only are you putting good healthy food into your body and the body of your children's and family but you are creating a security for yourself and your family and not have to worry about um, the store running out of eggs or what you're going to feed your family because maybe the eggs are too expensive who knows what things are going to happen but um you know it's a good way to teach the kids about where the food comes from and how to grow your own food how to feed and you um give your your body good nutrition so let me go see if i can find joe and he can tell you a little bit about um chesty i'm super excited to go see coco's egg and share it with you guys so you guys can see the difference in size is quite dramatic but i will not let you know that later on this evening i went to check the other coop and we had a uh, few more eggs so I believe every single one of the hens laid an egg that day now I'm not anticipating they're going to lay an egg every single day because it's winter but I was excited that one day out of the winter we had an egg from each one of them oh hi Coco she was actually yeah. sitting she was sitting on her egg oh. a big one there we go yeah, guys yeah, this is bigger look at that is. let me show you guys the difference so coco's is this one and then that's the size difference so they're getting there they used to be a much smaller but now they're getting there their sizes are getting built up i'm just very impressed with the quantity we got today and it was pretty cool hi coco hey girl <laughs> huh? this Tennessee yeah so all right i'm gonna take these inside come on Duffy. hey friends so i'm realizing that this plant does not like the frost so there's still plenty of green here and it'll bounce right back as long as i put it in the greenhouse so i'm going to dig it up it hasn't been here long so it shouldn't it shouldn't have that many roots as you can see look at that wow there's worms in there already so that's a good sign I might put a little kale here since I do have some kale plants or I might put a tree here. I don't know. But for now, I'm going to take this to the greenhouse. Here we are, friends. Oh, the greenhouse. So much warmer over here. So I'm going to find a container to put this in. As you can see here, the chilies are doing great in here. No frost. This one even had a little chili hanging down. So I am going to just lay it in here for now. Go get a pot and start filling it up. I'm also going to split these. These are dragon fruits. I'm gonna get individual containers. That way they can start growing in here. All right, first things first, we gotta get these pots with some soil. I just remember that I have to get that chili in some soil so let's go ahead and get that started first here we go super easy look at that
Hey, by the way, when things break, don't throw them away. As you can see, this broke, but it's a hand tool now. So now this little chili is going to grow and thrive inside the greenhouse. Give me tons of chilies. And basically what I'm doing is overwintering the chili plant, which you can do with just about any chili that you have. And it works. Well, now what I'm going to do is just fill these out, guys. Hey, friends, I just finished propagating all these dragon fruits and we're about to take off. But my husband came looking for me because I have to start getting ready. You guys know that when I come to the garden, I end up getting lost here and spending most of my time here. But since he's here, I want to take this opportunity to ask him about Chesty. I mentioned that uh, our dog was named after Chesty. And maybe Joe can tell you a little bit about Chesty and who he was. So in the in the the annals of Marine Corps history, Chesty is regarded Marine Corps wide from generation to generation as basically an icon. Uh, he's a legend in the Marine Corps. Um, uh, he holds such a high status that in in boot camp, oftentimes before Marines get in bed and and go to sleep, um, they will say things like "Good night, Chesty, wherever you are." Um, he served with distinction. He's one of the highly, most highly decorated Marines, um, and if not service members in the American military, uh, was awarded the Navy Cross, I believe, five times, and a Distinguished Cross once, holding six crosses at one period of time on his chest. Which, um, you know, Chesty served with distinction in the Pacific uh, campaigns, um, and most notably, uh, kind of achieved legendary status when <clears throat> in Korea he was sent to the Chosen Reservoir and uh, delivered a beaten down Marine Corps division out of defeat uh, and took on eight Chinese divisions um, at the Battle of the, the Chosen Reservoir. And um, Chesty's name comes from the fact that as a, a characteristic of his, of his build, he was a large barrel chested man and also uh, because of he was so highly decorated in his his display of ribbons on his chest chesty so his real name was lewis lewis b puller and he retired uh, at the rank of lieutenant general which is a three star nice yeah well i was walking around chesty was hanging out with us and i just mentioned that his name was chesty named after a marine who, you know, I didn't want to go into details because I didn't know the details and I was hoping to find you so you can share that information yep. with them. Well, guys, <laughs> that, that would include this, conclude this video. We're going to take off and go watch a movie and enjoy the rest of our Sunday afternoon. I did some work here in the garden. Video coming up so you guys can see what I got done here. Um, basically, just one task at a time, guys. Today, we cut all the... Um, dragon fruits that were outgrowing some of these little pots i did gave them in the visual container water them they're going to be here we used a different mixture that i haven't used before i'm going to see how it works out and how well it does and i'll let you guys know how it does for now i hope you guys have a blessed day and i'll see you in the next one